Welcome to The Embodied Psyche. I'm Hannah Bernstein, and today you'll see a conversation that I had with Matthias Schwentek, a sex and intimacy coach, whose body of work can now be found at somaticconsent.com. He brings together polyvagal theory, the work of Betty Martin, and some other innovations to teach people about the art of giving and receiving pleasure. I hope you'll enjoy. Hello, Matt. It's good to speak with you today. I'm really excited to jump into your body of work, Somatic Consent. Um, would you uh, explain for our viewers what the purpose of Somatic Consent is? So, hi, and uh, thank you for inviting me and having me on this interview. And yeah, it's a uh, good question and uh, many people asking that. So the word Somatic Consent, in itself, we can break that down into two different sections, what is somatic and consent. So when you take the first word somatic, you can put the word somatic in two different domains. One of them is the inflow, so everything you are aware of in your body. Um, so in the terms of somatic, it calls the afferent. So everything that you notice what's going on in your body, so everything that comes towards your brain, you're becoming aware of. So one specific thing I'm looking here is the inflow of our skin when we're touching something to feel the sensation of pleasure in our skin. So we can detect uh, temperature and uh, smoothness and uh, uh, vibrations. And we have the capacity of low speed movement that causing pleasure in our skin. And this pleasure of our skin, that's the inflow of the somatic nervous system I'm looking for. And then you have the other part of the nervous system um, in the somatic domain, that's the motor, so the action. So that we have a specific part in our brain, the motor center, the motor cortex, that where the impulses come from, for example, move your hand and touching something. So the somatic dynamic I'm pointing at is that we're going in an autonomous action towards feeling pleasure. That's the somatic part. The consent part is that as long nobody is involved, that's all good. We can touch anything as much as we like when we're just out in the sun or when we're touching the grass or a tree or a flower. But as soon as we're touching somebody, we need permission when we do this action for ourselves. Otherwise, the other person will feel neurologically invaded. So therefore, we have all this need to touch somebody, but we need permission first. And that's what the word consent is for. So consent is divided either in permission. So may I feel you, may I touch you? Or the other part of creating an agreement that where permission doesn't fit. So if I want you to do something for me or touch me in any way, it would not fit neurologically to give you permission if I want you to do something for me. So for example, if I would say, now you have permission to touch me when I want you to give me a massage. So I need to say, oh, could you please give me a massage? And that's more like an agreement where permission would not fit. So these two words fit in consent and that's the dynamic of somatic consent. And this four terms together, creating these two words and the entire buildup of the somatic consent engagement system. Thank you so much for that thorough explanation. Um, I've been through a bit of your course. I really appreciate that it's available online. Um, and I've really enjoyed what I think of as kind of the novel technology of your program, getting very specific about who touches for, who is the giver, who's the receiver, who wants it, who's asking for it. Um, I'm curious, where did this inspiration come from? What did you feel was missing about the understanding of consent in the world? So in the first place where my inspiration is from is from the Wheel of Consent from Betty Martin. So she was my mentor for about six years. So she created the Wheel of Consent that came from the origin from Harry Fettis from the three minute game. And uh, um, so this is the core idea about uh, consent. I mean, we all know that touch is uh, something vital and that feeling pleasure is something important in our nervous system. And everybody knows before you touch somebody, you need permission first. Uh, 
So I was always really good with my hands and always really inspired touching other people and doing one-on-one -on -one empowerment sessions. And I noticed that um, when I was working with people that I was really good in creating um, an ecstatic experience in their body. And, um, and I would say eight or nine of 10 sessions, I was just like completely in the flow and in the, in the dynamic of um, meeting this red line of where they want to be or what they want to experience. But this two or one sessions of 10 felt kind of just like something is kind of not really right. Something's not really feeling okay. And I could not point my, my finger on it. And what I figured out was that we all have this tendency um, to go along with touch that doesn't feel pleasant for us. So that most people carry in the nervous system a traumatic experience they're mostly not aware of because they don't really know how to ask for what they want. So, and when I just went into this dynamics, I had to admit that I had to dig much deeper into the trauma response of our nervous system and what the shutdown of our nervous system is about. So I learned about the polyvagal theory and the um, realization that we all have been touched against our will and that this two of 10 clients literally needed another approach that is more um, cognitive and more trauma releasing than actually going into a pleasure and ecstatic experiencing. Consent is one of my favorite areas of thought because I think when we get it right, we can do so much more for our clients or for our relationships. Um, it sounds like initially you were using uh, your intuition and touch to try to, to find commonality. And then you moved into this modality that includes um, verbal cues, that cognitive component you were talking about. Um, I think in my work, I behave very similarly. I use intuition and talking to make up for the moments when intuition doesn't work. I'm just curious about, um, so you, you talked about how some people just go along with what's happening touch wise. Um, I think it can also happen verbally that we have this inclination to maybe be obedient, maybe people please. Are there any ways to, um, find commonality with a client or in a relationship with someone who is overriding their own trauma response to verbally be compliant with the experience? How do you work with someone who's out of touch with that? Mm. Yeah, so um, when I dig deeper into the trauma response and um, uh, noticing how deep this um, tendency is entwined in the nervous system going along with touch and then trying to like what they don't like, and trying to change how they feel it instead of changing what is happening to them. Uh, I noticed that most people's neurological response of actually feeling pleasure is completely shut down. So the inflow, the sensory inflow is literally not functioning. So that when I was trying to let people find this sensory inflow first so that they could ask for um, what they want me to do to them, they could not opening up the sensory inflow because the nervous system was literally still in a kind of a freeze and shut down response. What most people have when they have a, a, a long time history of, of uh, um, being touched against their will. So what I figured out is there are two components that are really important. One of them is um, I did related to trauma um, release uh, a TRE certification. So it's a trauma trauma release exercise from David Pacelli. So that I let most of people who have difficulties go through the release process of the parasympathetic release mechanism of the brainstem that is releasing the tension of the body where the body is getting loose. And when that has happened, the body is much more open and receptive for sensual touch. So that I actually let them find as well through their breath, this self-empowering um, motor action, the motivation of going into the movement for themselves. And when this is activated, this part of the frontal lobe of the neocortex kind of switches on where they can make choices. And when this is happening, so it has to do with a lot of conversation in the moment kind of 
picking up the cues where they are. But when that is happening, the first thing this, that these people need to say is, don't touch me. So to own the desire, not wanting to be touched. And I, I just make sure that they repeat that a few times, really saying, don't touch me. And then kind of creating words for them that they can reprogram them say, uh, themselves by saying, if I want you to touch me, I will let you know. And then I put on top of that something called the embodiment massage, where I say, if you want me to touch you, I do that for only 10 seconds. And then I put my hand away till you make the next choice, what you want and how you want that. And if you don't choose anything, I will not touch you. So that any movement and action towards them has to come by their choice of how and where they want to be touched. Wow, that is such a powerful change from how people usually engage in touch. And I can see how for someone who has had their touch boundaries repeatedly violated, as you mentioned, which happens for many, many of us, um, learning how to, to find our affirmative consent through first stating boundaries seems like a really wonderful way to get into it, to have that distinction of knowing what we don't want before asking for what we do and then having what we do want in very small increments so it's not overriding yeah. that people-pleasing yeah. tendency. Yeah. I really appreciate that. Um, I would love it if you wouldn't mind sharing the three-minute game with, with our audience. Would you mind describing that for, for people who haven't encountered it before? Yeah. So the three-minute game origins from Harry Fettis. Um, Harry Fettis is um, um, running a center in uh, uptown New York uh, for gay men. And um, he was... Uh, guiding a retreat at, um, God, what's his name? Uh, the Sexological Bodywork um, inventor, what's his name? He has the Body School of Electric in the Bay Area. Um, anyway, so he was guiding a workshop, and this workshop was on power, surrender, and intimacy, where he was wanting to give uh, people... Uh, uh, a fair share of engaging with each other. And he came pretty fast across this dynamic that there are only four engagements happening. So one of them is I do what I want within your limits. You do what you want within my limits. You do what I want within your limits. And I do what you want within your limits. No, it's in my limits. So, so, so that, that when we engage in with somebody else, that we um, having this very clear dynamic of when I want something, I put myself first and I respect your limits. And when I give something to you that I put my desire aside and I respect my limits. So that limits are an important piece in the three-minute game. So the three-minute game in itself can be very complicated when you come from the original questions. And the original questions is, what do you want to do to me for three minutes? And what do you want me to do to you for three minutes? And just these two questions, it's just like in some people's understanding, the mind cannot comprehend, they can, cannot grasp that. And so they get confused. Well, what I want to do to you for me, just like what? So, so we narrowed that down into the dynamic of, instead of making these questions as an offer, we turned that around in making a clear request. And so that we don't have to put that in a game so that we can come from a clear place of expressing our desires with whomever we are. So for example, if, I'm somewhere on a play party or if I'm somewhere with a friend or with a lover or um, play buddy or whoever I'm engaging with, if I want to receive something that I take full responsibility about my desire and that's either I want to do something for myself so I need permission from you or I want you to do something for me where I ask you for that action so that I'm stepping into full receiving and embody receiving. And that makes it really simple and easy to understand. 
So when you have embodied that and you turn that around into the opposite side, then you can literally embody others to ask for a similar question. So that if I have been playing with you and that came from the receiving side, that I could literally let you find the receiving side as well by saying, hey, what is it that actually you want to do to me for yourself? Or what is it actually that you want me to do to you? Is there anything that you would like for three minutes? So that makes it really approachable and easy uh, to practice. So at least in America, much of the world is still shut down for the, the current pandemic. Um, I don't know what it's like in Stockholm, but I understand in ordinary times, you do these workshops in person. You'll have people um, with, with partners who are not, you know, high um, ask partners, like someone who the stakes are high with, like a husband or wife, um, try out these kinds of games in smaller ways. I'm just curious about what that looks like, like what kind of touch people are engaging in, how people begin this in gentle ways with one another. When you're connected with people in a room and you know that you can make a choice and that's part of the environment, it's like nobody has to touch anybody. If you don't want to touch anybody and just want to know how the dynamics are, you can just sit there and just observe what people do. And um, that's totally fine. So that people, when they see that they have this choice and they're not coming from this fear-driven rigidity that they are no control and they're not allowed and they're getting sick and help and not, then when, as soon they're getting feeling safe because they can make choices they want to touch and they notice pretty fast that this touch from a neurological place is actually really healthy and allows their nervous system to relax and that allows people to feel, to feel connected. And most people kind of getting loose from this uh, rigid fear response of touch is dangerous now. Yeah, I'm really glad you spoke to that new psychology that people seem to have with the fear of corona, touch being more dangerous, more scary than it used to be for them. So I think probably in most of the world, there's going to have to be some like touch rehab for people and understanding of coming back into the body, coming back into the safety around other people. And as yeah. you mentioned, touch is so healthy for our nervous system when it's done well and consensually. Um, so I think some of these tools are going to be really vital to making sure people don't have long-term fear of touch interaction with others after this um, situation in the world. Um, I, I really have valued this conversation. Um, I'm wondering if there's anything uh, that you think is important for people to have as, as kind of like takeaways, like things, the basic things that you hope people learn if they learn nothing else from this conversation. Mm. So when I teach classes, it can be a festival or it can be a three day or a the longest retreat I had was 30 days uh, educating people on this touch modality. If they go away with these two questions, um, how to receive, then they are on the winning side. And the two questions uh, are to make this request, can I or may I or am I allowed to, do I have permission to do that for myself? So making a request based on permission, may I. And the other question, will you or can you or could you do such and such for me? So that this two question allow people to be empowered and finding a deeper layer of receiving where they actually know how to fill up their cup for themselves. If people want to take this information and get a little bit deeper into it to practice this work at home, how would you recommend that they uh, continue their learning? Hmm. Yeah, I have invested a lot of time and effort and passion into creating the webpage, so meticonsent.com. And everybody who is interested to dig deeper into that, there is a free student handbook to download as a PDF. So where I've just like drawn big maps about how that all works and the description about the nervous system. And there's a free online course people can go into, uh, takes you about, I don't know, two days 
um, kind of just like to getting the inflow activated through description. There's an app as well and um, another purchase of a paid course. But these two free um, offerings, they are available for everybody. Please go and just uh, uh, use it the way how it suits you. Well, I hope that people find more um, attunement with their own pleasure and feel more empowered to ask for what they want. Um, and I'm really glad that you're spreading that message in the world. Thank you so much. Yeah, you're so welcome. And I'll definitely put those links down below in the video so people can just click there and, and see this work. Thank you so All much. Right. Yeah, you're very welcome.